This is the plaintiff, Rafaela Twist. She says she hired the defendant's company to install a swimming pool at her mother's house, and the inept man damaged her sewer line and the sewage backed up into the house. The defendant tried to cover up the fact he forgot a 12-foot section of piping to the sewer line in the street, and now has the audacity to claim he isn't responsible. <laughs> we'll see about that. She's suing for $2,450, the cost to replace her missing sewer line. This is the defendant, Bruce Davis. He says his guys did break a sewer line, but his contract clearly states he's not responsible. The plaintiff's husband saw his men break it, and he was informed he had to get it fixed before they filled in the pool. When they arrived four weeks later, the pipe was covered in dirt, and he assumed the plaintiff had it fixed. Bottom line, the plaintiff and her husband failed to comply with the repair, and he owes nothing. He's accused of causing a backup. All parties, please use your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. Rafaela Twist, Thank you, you are suing Skylar Pools and Spas Incorporated, represented here by Bruce Davis, for $2,450, a cost to replace a sewer line that, according to you, they never told you had been broken. Tell me what's going on. Um, we, my mom came to us and asked us to move in with her home. She's 94 years young, but it's time not to live by herself and ask us to I'll come I'll say. And <laughs> come, and live, come and move in and with And where her. were you moving from? Um, Somewhere else in Deerfield Beach? In Pompano Beach. In Pompano Beach. three so you miles were away. Local. Okay, so you guys decide to move in with her, but... But she'd been living in the house since 1954, so it needed extensive facelift. And we had talked about it years I think ago. It, I think we could call that more <laughs> an exorcism as opposed to a facelift. Yes. Speaking as someone whose mother lives in the same avocado kitchen and yes. refuses to allow me to touch it for her. Yes, yes I got avocado it. Avocado was the going color. You, well, and an orange <laughs> shag carpet in what was my grandmother's uh, former bedroom. Yeah. And when my husband and I got married, we stayed there because we had sold our house and we stayed there for a month. My husband called it the Kevorkian suite. Yes. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yes. Go ahead. All right. So so we, um, we had always wanted to pull. I had always wanted to pull. I'm, I'll put this on me. I, you know, growing up, went to grandma's house. That was, that was a good thing. So went and went to different places. We hired Skylar Pool. They had, you know, good write-ups. Anything that was complained about, he had responded. So I felt confident. Long story short, we... We're getting ready to move back into the house. We're finally finished with the interior remodeling in May. They had finished with the pool in April. And when we they went and did the plumbing test, all the water and mud backed up. Inside the house. Inside the, sewer the house. Backed up. The sewer so you backed call up. a company to check on that, and what did they tell you? They ran the line and said, we can't get past the spot right here. And what spot was that? That spot was about um, midway from on the pool deck. To what kind of deck was put down? Uh, travertine pavers. Okay, so what happened? So dug everything up and found not only was there a piece of pipe that had a hole in it, then there was a missing 12-foot section on top of that that went all the way to the city sewer line. And then it was... Wait, so where was the sewage... Well, you had only been there a month, so where was it going? It wasn't going the anywhere? Problem, it was stopped... Go ahead. The problem was... When they did the dig of the pool, the house had already been demoed. There was no working sewer at all. There was no water, no toilets, nothing, until May 24th when they were finished. Because we put a deadline on now, the, not these guys, the inside contractor, that we're moving in on that Friday. That was a Wednesday. I came home and it all was backing up. But that's when we had to dig it up. They dug it up that evening. We found the break, and right past the break, there was a piece of pipe that they cut. It was a 12-foot section cut out. So we where was the sewage going? Into the ground? There was none. There was no sewage. Because there was nothing. No, but I mean, I mean, so but pretty quickly, it was uh, well, backing up. You, what was blocking it from going into the ground? The ground? It, it, yes, it basically yeah, it was the mud. It, it was it, the it What happened? Um, I was at the house just about that time when the, when the plumbing guys were there because I was doing something else, and they said they thought there was a broken line. Um, I knew nothing about it other than the fact that during the, the initial construction, there was 
a hint that the, the line might have been broken. How, what's a um, hint? I wasn't there at the present time, but there was talk between uh, my foreman, my front end foreman, and Mr. Twist that they thought there might have been a broken line. What, no, what, nothing was seen. Where's your foreman? He's not here. Do no. you have an affidavit I, from him? Yes, I do. Okay. And according to him, what? He told Mr. Twist, I broke it, or I think I may have broken it, or what? They didn't know what exactly was going on because they didn't see anything. Yeah, All but what made him think that they broke it? Mr. Twist is the one that brought it up. He thought it was broken. During the excavation of the swimming pool, there was apparently damage caused to the existing sewer line. At some point, Ted Twist, that's you, yes. was looking at an old pipe that was exposed, and he was advised, what old pipe were you looking at? <laughs> there was um, on the, where the pipe was broken at, was on the shallow end of the pool. I'm going to just, so you know which way I'm going to look, it was at the shallow end of the pool. There was a pipe. Where by the shallow end? Like what, coming uh, out of the landscaping? No, no, no. The, that's the one that was broken was in the ground. We okay. didn't say the one he's saying is exposed. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm saying. That's at the deep end. That was at the other end of the pool. There was a right by the house, and that was an old. Do you have a picture of that? Of that one? Yeah. No, ma'am. Okay. So according to him, feet. there's an old pipe that's exposed, and according to him, he tells you you should investigate and repair any damage that may have been caused during excavation. And you're saying he's talking about the wrong pipe. That, yeah, that's not the pipe. When we... advising Ted to investigate if indeed damage was caused, his wife was in the house listening to our conversation. I went on to make a joke stating it should be taken care of so it does not turn into a <laughs> blanky situation. <laughs> and Raphael was in, Raphaela was in hysterics laughing. That... Okay. Um, so who did you have to pay $2,450 to replace the sewer line? That sounds steep. Well, they had to dig everything up. What's everything? The pavers? The, the pavers were up, well, and they had to dig the line and then put in new line. Yeah. All right. And your, your response to this is what? This um, is we have a contract with them, yeah. and our contract indicates on it in four different places that we're not responsible for utilities, specifically, and, and, and sewer lines are included in that, in that contract. And I highlighted in uh, one, two, three, four places. Okay. Under three, responsibilities of Schuyler Pools, conditions and limitations. Schuyler Pools is not responsible for damage to improvements and appurtenances located in or reasonably adjacent to the access routes or the pool site, including but not limited to such items as curbs, sidewalks, driveways, patios, lawns, shrubs, and sprinkler system. They're not responsible. We are not responsible for damage caused by ground compaction by excavation equipment. It is the buyer's responsibility to either know or locate ground, underground sprinkler lines, sewer lines, septic. Typically when this, because I've done, I mean, I come from a construction family, doesn't, isn't there like a number that you call and then the city comes out Eight, or, or, or your power company comes out and the, they mark with a spray can or some other equally wonderful method, really high tech method, where the line is so that the construction people can avoid it. You were going to say there's a three-digit number? 811 is, is called. They come out and they locate electric lines, telephone lines, anything that's metal in the ground. What about metallic. sewer lines? Sewer lines generally are made out of either plastic or clay, and they can't like be located. But this one was cast iron. They didn't locate it. I mean, the, there did, was So no did 811 one. come out? Yes. Oh, so 811 did their little spray paint thing, but 811 did not spray paint where this was? No, ma'am, they did right. not. They, they did, did not spray so they didn't find it. It is the buyer's responsibility to know locate underground sprinkle lines, sewer lines, septic, or water lines. Were there, weren't there plans to the house? No. Uh, no. It's a very old house. Yes, yes, exactly. But what happened? Da why plans. doesn't the city have it on file? On There's not even microfilm of it in it yet. Or That's yet or ever. When they told us They that. got rid of the microfilm. Yeah. And your mom didn't have the plan. No. No. And she had original paperwork. She had her... Hey, Mortgage listen, payment. She's, how old did you say she was? 94? 94. She doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> she doesn't have to edit what she says. <laughs> My mother's 92, and she mentions that to me constantly. That she, I said, you didn't edit anything at 40. Why would you edit at 92? Um, curb, sidewalk, driveway, patio, lawn, shrubs, and sprinkler systems are not responsible for damage caused by ground excavation. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good for them. Their contract's pretty good for them. But that but doesn't say uncommon. anything about sewer lines. No, it says including but not limited to. And then it says in three other places that you're representing where the sewer lines are. I understand the quandary that you're in, but, but why? what about this contract would make them responsible for, 
Like, tell me what your theory of liability is. My theory is, is neglect. They neglected to tell us about it. It sounds like they didn't know. But what, here's the thing. The, what concerns me is the, the 12 feet of missing pipe. You know, that had to come up during the excavation. I mean, I guess that's big equipment. And how, how, how wide around is the... I want, I want to say it was a three-inch pipe. I'm not, that's this big. And, they, and we have... A cast iron three-inch pipe during excavation, they would kind of know if they had ripped something well, like that a, out, right? Usually, usually Hold on a four, second. It's usually four inches. Okay. So, yeah, like they would cast know. Cast iron pipe is usually four inches wouldn't, so, wouldn't I'm asking you, during excavation, <clears throat> how big is that machine that people would not know that they ripped it out? No, you would know it, but there was, not, there was no pipe laying around other than a piece of pipe he saw on the other end of the pool. That's, that's incorrect. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So is it enforceable for this defendant to have a contract that says, I'm not responsible if I mess up your sewer pipes and your house gets flooded with sewage? Um, I mean, you're binded by contract. And the contract says that. Is it enforceable? I, I can't have that kind of long pause because yeah, we need to go. I mean, if you have signed... Give, give me a yes or no. I would say yes. Okay, what do you say? No. Why? They did the damage. I think they should pay. But the contract says they're not responsible. No, they were negligent. They needed they to. They were negligent, but they're saying we're not responsible for our negligence. There's some due care. We'll see going inside the courtroom. See, your theory of liability is you knew and didn't tell us. That's got to be your theory of liability. You yeah. knew and didn't tell us. What evidence do you have that they knew? Because if they just didn't tell, if this happened, and it just happened, your contract, you would agree with me, uh, says this is your, you, it's yours to absorb. We had, before, the, how, before they started their dig, when we st started the renovation, we've got proof that we ran, we did this camera test on the pipe to make sure everything was working. Before. I know. Can uh, you tell me, though, you, you do understand the problem, right, that I'm having. No. So say something that addresses my problem. My problem is you, not I, signed a contract that says that this kind of stuff is going to be your responsibility. Why did they have to pay for it? What changed from the time you signed the contract to now? What changed is that they did damage, they removed it, they never told us about it, they covered it up, they put pavers on it, and until we moved in the house... But that's exactly what this contract covers. We're not responsible for damage. But if they would have told us that the sewer line was broken... So your theory broken, then is you guys maliciously covered it up and were hoping that sewage wouldn't back up into our house. What evidence do you have that they knew it and didn't tell you? This email... Pictures that, of the pipe missing? No, no that's not email, evidence that they knew and This didn't email you. here says that Scott Wheeler told us about it. Yeah, that's, and, they, and now we know that it was about a different pipe. Okay. But he's saying about the sewer line in this email, which was not the, the, in, was in discussed. In the email, he never, it doesn't talk about the, when you asked me about the exposed pipe, it didn't talk about the exposed pipe. That's too. There it, was a joke about it being really crappy. <laughs> what never, on earth other than sewage could he have been talking about if he made such a joke? That it was not a sewer pipe. It, okay. and You're not listening to me. Anything. You're not listening to me. <laughs> it may not have been a sewer pipe. But you are acknowledging now a conversation where they said, you better check all this. Okay? And you're saying, oh, yeah. it was a different pipe over there and I knew it wasn't a sewer pipe. He made the joke. I didn't correct him. I don't, you know, whatever. So let's assume the conversation never took place. Then you would have to prove to me Mm -hmm. Something that you're not proving to me, which is that because your contract says if they damage your stuff, you're responsible for underground sewer pipes that you did not stop and listen, that you did mm -hmm. not notify them about. Okay. So it is your misfortune that it is a really old house and that you have no plans, so you can't tell them about it. So they don't know that it's there, and nobody sees a pipe or you don't have evidence that they did and that they said, I know what we'll do. Let's make these homeowners' lives impossible and let's pretend that pipe didn't get pulled up, especially with a contract that says that they're not going to have to pay for it anyway. You have zero proof that they did anything wrong and my verdict is for the defendants. This is a contract you signed, not me. All right. Well, unfortunately for the plaintiffs, it's not a good day for the people's court for you. You heard the judge's explanation. What do you think? I, they were neglect. They did not tell me about the line. She they covered agree. it up. She, she doesn't, doesn't agree, agree, but that's what happened. Okay. Nobody told us about it, and um, it cost us, instead of costing $200 to replace something that was dug up, it cost us $2,500. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank Should you. Should have read the contract a little more closely. Okay, here comes Mr. Davis, the defendant. Were you pretty, pretty sure that you were going to prevail okay, or were you questionable? No, I was pretty sure. You were? 
Yes. Okay. I, I, people just don't read the contracts. We give our contracts out to clients prior to even signing them. We give them a copy of our contract, ask them to read it during the initial presentation, and for the most part... Sounds like you cover yourself fairly well for a lot of causes, and you make sure you're not responsible You have for, to. Right? You don't really know what's in the ground. There's no way of knowing what's yeah. in the ground. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank All right, you very sir. much. Thank you very much. Thank you must sign a few documents. Harvey, the contract, critical to read it, right? I mean, here's the thing, Doug. You can have a contract that excuses your negligence and you're not responsible. There are a lot of contracts that say this. The fact is here, there's just simply no negligence at all. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.